Mark 13, 13. Everyone will hate you because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. A recent report says in the first four months this year, China has removed crosses from more than 250 churches. An Italian magazine covering human rights issues in the communist country says the removals are part of a government crackdown on religion. Tear gas, tossing Bibles into fires, and burning the American flag. Just the latest from nightly riots that have drawn thousands to this city park in front of Portland's federal courthouse. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 4. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. Acts 2.17 says this, In the last days God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. This is Pastor Dana, and uh, I had a dream on Monday night, August 10th, and uh, I haven't said a lot about it because I know when I when I share this is going to make some people mad. And my life's, my life's not been the same since I posted that first dream. I never asked for this. I never asked for God to show me anything. I was doing a series of dreams and visions. I thought maybe I'll get some dreams. Maybe some others will get some dreams. But uh, it's been different. It's been a lot different. want to add in a disclaimer in this video and let you guys know that I didn't even know if I was going to post this video or not. Because these things, I have shared dreams before, not always easily absorbed, accepted, and to put yourself out there like this and share something so spiritual and out of the normal, it's uncomfortable. Well, my heart is pounding so fast. Um, I just feel like I got a word from God that is I need to share. It's very heavy. God has really put it on me to say something, and um, I've recorded this video a lot of times, and I have not posted it. These dreams are from a couple of months ago, um, but they're so relevant, so I just need to get this off my chest. I need to tell you guys. I prayed on these dreams. I prayed for confirmation that they are from the Lord, and I've received those confirmations, and I've written them down so I could share them with friends and family and loved ones, um, but I just really feel led by the Holy Spirit to take, to be obedient and take this a step further and share it with others. There are things that God, I believe, is showing me that the country needs to see. So I'm just going to share this and you can do with it what you want. Um, I'm not asking God to give me any more. I've not prayed God to give me another dream since I had the first one. They keep coming and... Uh, so I dreamt I was in the month of October. I saw the month of October as a calendar and was waving like, like it was being blown by, a, by a, a strong wind, not a fitful wind, not violent, just kind of a fitful wind, you know. And I saw a finger appear and it pointed to the second week of October and it dragged the finger through the third week of the month. So it covered second and third week of October. And then it pointed October 31st and it held the position. It just kind of tapped it and held it. The first thing I saw was a rock. It came flying out of the sky and it landed in a large pond. And the ripples started off small, but then they became like vicious waves. Um, like, like when the wind begins to blow stronger and the ripples start to go further out. Luke 21, 25. And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. Then the next thing I know, I was miles away from the city. I was floating in air on top of a cliff, and I could see um, a big asteroid coming down towards the city. It showed the ocean and the asteroid hitting at a very shallow angle. 
by the way, I believe in God and Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And he's given me many dreams, three which have come to pass, but a lot that haven't, and I've been deceived before. So I don't wanna I don't, I don't wanna do that again. Um, and I don't wanna deceive any of you guys, so I ask that you pray to God. Uh, for discernment and for knowledge of this. Okay, today is July 26th, 2015. I had a dream last night. Um, and it was about a comet. And, uh, I don't know where I was living. We were somewhere here on the East Coast. I'm in New York right now. But there was these, there was a crazy storm that was going on. There were like funnel clouds forming in like, like two or three seconds, there was funnel clouds coming out of the sky. My children and my wife were there. I said, this, I said a comet just hit the East Coast. September 12th, 2019, this morning, I had a dream. And it was a second dream that I had in 10 months of the same exact, the same exact thing. Okay, so in this dream, I'm kind of a ghost type of vibe feeling and I could see everybody but nobody else could see me so I'm back in my home state which is Georgia and I can see my family there and all of a sudden I'm taken out in space so I'm hearing this very loud whistling rumbling sound it was very eerie and haunting feeling in my soul of the sound that I was hearing all of a sudden I saw this huge asteroid look like a mountain it was so huge hurling towards earth then i was put back on earth and i was looking up waiting for this thing to hit and then all of a sudden it crashed through the dome and went into the atlantic ocean and the reason why i knew it was the atlantic ocean is because george is on that coast of the atlantic ocean i i saw the asteroid hit into the water the water instantly turned into like hundreds of tsunami waves it was high above the earth i could basically see the earth from space I was like in space, pretty much, you could say. And they, what I believe to be, I guess it was an asteroid. Could have been a comet, I don't know if to say asteroid. One hit the Gulf of Mexico, and the other hit the Atlantic Ocean. I looked up in the sky and I saw two white streaks. I heard like a boom, like a boom. And then I saw two white streaks come across the sky, and then, um, I thought it was like, I didn't, well, I didn't know what it, what it was at first. I mean, when I woke up, I thought it was a meteorite, but um, it really didn't look like one uh, or a comet. It kind of, I think it was missiles. I ended up, um, how do you say, hearing another boom in the sky. It was pop, and then I looked up, and this time it was a meteorite. I could see the big rock, like, just a big rock. You could tell it was a meteorite. And it came and it hit the ocean, and this, this wave was much bigger. And everybody started running. There was... There were soldiers that were beside me running. I was standing in the middle of space on a ring just like Saturn's and I looked up and around and saw stars everywhere. I then saw a big body of rock like an asteroid shooting down. I looked down through the ring and saw the earth and the asteroid going straight toward it and it hit right near Florida. I looked up and saw the asteroid was followed by a multitude of other asteroids that were heading to Earth. We were walking down the street during the daylight in a place that was just like New York, but this place was in ruins. When suddenly in the sky was shown a large, fiery asteroid that was about to hit the ocean. Yeah, this is, this is the map here that I was seeing in my dream, and uh, I'll zoom in. Now, when I when I when I was seeing when I was being shown this in the um, in the vision, um, I was being shown that I was going to land right here. But one of the first things I remember after falling asleep was the vision that he gave me regarding um, seeing an asteroid falling to the Earth. And then I, right after the small asteroid that I saw on the on space, I saw a huge big asteroid coming this way and I don't think we have time left now I saw the asteroids two asteroids coming and uh, 
it's going to be a small one and right after that a big one. Um, I look into the sky and I see a star just blazing on fire heading straight for earth and um, I look over and I could see the moon and I can't attest to what color the moon was but I can tell you I saw a rocket ship that was um, trying to leave the earth and um, I you could you could see the um, the star getting closer and I look back over at the house and the house wasn't there anymore it was gone it was this giant body like huge body of water and the star landed in this body of water and I felt like just smoke and everything rush at me and I woke up in my dream after I see that and I see the sky I then see a vision of a meteor or an asteroid um, coming towards us like not in a side profile where I see it in the sky and it's falling, but now I, I'm, it's like I'm looking right at it um, and I see it coming towards us. And then it flashes to another vision and I, it's like I'm in space and I'm looking at the earth and the world and I can see where it's going and it's aiming. And the best way I could describe it was there was, a, there was land masses and it kind of made like a M, uh, like a capital M kind of, and where the M came together right in the middle in the ocean is where it was aiming towards. I started to dream. And the first place that I went in my dream is I was in the universe. I was in space and it's so amazing because God knows how much I love space and how obsessed I am with the universe. The next moment that I'm gonna share with you guys is a most favorite moment of this entire dream. All of a sudden, really see his face because he has somewhat of like a like a not a hood like a, a covering around his face it was like a cream covering like flicked over his shoulders type thing so I couldn't really see his face he appears next to me and he takes a hold of my right hand <laughs> he took a hold of my hand and that verse just immediately came to my mind and Isaiah when he says I take hold of your right hand and I had this moment of like he's always there he's always holding our hand just like that all the time he's always there he's always holding your hand just want to start off by saying last night I spent all evening stayed up really late spent all evening just in worship and writing a song that's telling God, like, I don't want to say anything that aren't your words. I don't want to do anything that's not something that you want me to do. Like, I am completely giving myself and laying down my life for you. And anything you want me to say and do, that's what I'll do. And I don't want to speak a word that's not of you and inspired by you and from you. I just felt this heaviness on my back and on my chest and I just get goosebumps. And I knew that God was about to tell me something, so I got out my journal and I started writing. I had no idea what I was going to write. No idea. I was <laughs> just like, okay, I'm supposed to get my pen out and my paper and just be still and listen. And I did. <laughs> just going to read it to you. The people are coming to a turning point, a point beyond which they cannot turn back. They are on the precipice and on the brink. Once, once they step in, they will not come out. It is deep, deeper than they know. They teeter on the edge and they taunt gravity. Gravity will win and they will fall. Have I not spoken of all these things? Have I not written them plainly? Yet their eyes have been blinded, their vision clouded, and they cannot see. Their trust is in material things. Let material things save them. Their trust is in evil man. Let evil men save them. 
When you place your trust, you get on that ride for better or worse. For some, it will be worse. They know not where that ride will take them, but I know. I know where they are going, and I know how far they will fall. They go, and they do not call out for help. They fall, and they do not beg for rescue. My hand is stretched out still, that any may take hold. I am still knocking, yet no one answers the door. I am still begging, yet no one listens to me. They put their earmuffs on, and they walk on by. They continuously turn their attention from me to anything else. And yet, here I stand, heartbroken. I just want them to be mine. I would hold them so close. I would calm every fear. I would wash them in rivers of peace. I would make them clean like me. I would cherish them every day and give them all my affection. I would lavish them with gifts more than they could fathom. I would take them in my arms and protect them from evil and never let them go if they would just let me. So many people don't want God and don't believe in Jesus. And this is what he's saying. He wants all these things for us. And so many people, so many of you guys are just going to hell without even crying to God for help. They don't even ask him for help. They just go. He wants nobody to go. All we have to do is take his hand. His hand is like here. As you're falling, just take my hand. And so many people just don't do it. I believe those are words straight from God. They are not my words, I swear to you. I would not have known those things. I would not even have written that. That is not my words. I just had a really crazy encounter with Jesus and I really want to share it because I don't want to forget any of the details. I get to um, this first little hill on my street and um, I go into a vision and I see Jesus and he's walking in front of me in a, in a, in a robe that's white and um, I'm praying in tongues this whole time. He told me to pray in tongues in the spirit, the whole, whole walk. And so I am and, and I see Jesus and I get this urge in my spirit to, to start to run. I had this urge to run and I like, so I, I wiped my eyes and I'm like, uh, am I, is that really what I'm seeing? Jesus, is that you? And I looked again and lo and behold, it's Jesus. And, um, I got this sense of urgency that he was leaving me behind. And I, I got afraid and I didn't like the space that was between us. And so as much as I hate to run, I started to jog. You know, I'm praying in tongues and I'm calling out for Jesus and I, I can't ca catch up with him. And, um, and I got this sense of urgency, like he's leaving me behind. <laughs> like he's leaving me behind, like, like I was a little kid and, you know, and I was watching my dad, like get in a car and leave me somewhere and knowing that he wasn't going to come back. further and faster <laughs> and, I, and I'm crying I'm like I'm crying like this is like I'm running towards Jesus <laughs> and I'm and I know that my my soul and my spirit is crying out don't leave me behind <laughs> don't leave me behind I'm sorry I'm sorry for the space I like get between us don't leave me behind <laughs> and so I just ran I just ran. Finally, like, I reached this point of the hill where I'm able to catch up to him. And 
he finally turns and he looks at me because he hadn't turned his head the whole time but I was running after him and and he held my hand he said come and walk beside me and so I held his hand and he said my heart is that not one would be left behind <laughs> But many on that day that cried, Lord, Lord, I'll turn my face from them as if I never knew them. And I, I said, I said, Lord, but if, but if those ones are the ones that don't love you. And he said, he said, in the hearts of man, I've placed a hole where my love belongs. And that the only difference between those who already love me and those who don't love me yet is that the ones who don't love me yet don't know that I'm the love of their life. <laughs> and that they're the love of mine. And he said that... He's coming back. He's coming back and it's sooner than we think. <laughs> and you know, like as I'm running, as I was running, I was thinking about like all the little petty problems that we have going on in our lives right now and how, you know, we can get so easily like tripped up on petty offenses and on political agendas and and you know, this person hurt my feeling and this person hurt my feeling and, and this person's wrong and, and this and that and the other and me, me, me and I, I, I and you know, and, and the, the truth of the matter is, is that when I saw Jesus ahead of me and he was leaving me behind and I wasn't close to him, none of those things mattered. None of those things mattered. Man, I'm just like, if anything, this is a word for, for all the people out there. Whether you know Jesus or you don't know Jesus, he's coming. He's coming. And it's sooner than we think. He is coming. Jesus. Some, this is good news, but for many, this isn't good. Please, it's not too late to just seek God, give your life to Him, and just seek Him. Just please, just try it. Just with all your heart, just please, just, just seek him. Please, I beg you, please. I don't care what I look like right now. I don't care. I don't care if you think that I'm just putting on a show. I don't care if you think that this is just craziness. I don't care. Wake up. Please wake up. Back to my dream, I hear a trumpet blast and I, I hear it go off. It's loud. It's like a deep I, I, you hear it, not like a siren, um, and it just began to get louder and louder and louder. And I hold my children and I hug them and I tell them, and Jesus is coming. And then I say, no, no, Jesus is here. He's here now. And I wake up. Um, and it's just, sorry, it's, it's so beautiful 
to know that, you know, whatever destruction is coming to the earth, um, people, you know, have had dreams of earthquakes and floods and tsunamis and asteroids. Um, whatever it is, I really believe and I feel that God is going to rescue his people and rescue his church before that. Um, we may begin to see it. I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's like I just felt like the Lord was coming right before impact. Um, so then I woke up.